You know what, there's something about people watching super violent movies that just changes our little brains. Guys, my common sense is tingling. Hey cinephiles, Trace projecting out into the internet for D-News today. Movies are getting more violent, sexual, and profane. Studies show violence in movies has tripled since the 1950s, and PG-13 movies contain more gun violence than R-rated movies since 2009. In fact, all movies have gotten more sexual, and even G-rated movies have gotten more violent. Shoot 'em up movies, they're fun but can also be bad for us. So, with R-rated comic book movies hitting the theaters, what is all this violence, profanity, and sex doing to our brains? As technology has improved and storytelling has evolved over the last hundred years, many movies have become more realistic, but still depict crazy outlandish situations. Unfortunately for us, our brains haven't evolved that fast. When your brain sucks in the latest action film, we react as if it's really happening. For example, filmmakers often use violence to get the good guys to solve a problem. This teaches us violence solves problems. That's not realistic. And it has implications in everyday life. Linfield College found women who watched videos showing relational violence and aggression, like pretty much all wives of wherever shows, went on to instigate relational hostility. A 15-year study in developmental psychology found if kids watch violent television or movies, they display more violence later in life. And this is regardless of sex, social status, intellectual capabilities, parenting styles, and parental aggressiveness. The caveat is the kids have to identify with the characters on screen and then believe the violence is realistic, which studies have shown is happening more often because of our silly lizard brains. And this goes the same for everyone. A study in prevention science found there was a positive correlation between teens who watch R-rated films and waging sensation-seeking behavior. Sensation-seekers are those who crave risky behaviors, like in this example, alcohol use. Studies found that teens who wouldn't normally perform risky behaviors, like underage alcohol consumption, would be more likely to do so after watching a movie where such risky behaviors were portrayed. Damn our susceptible brains! Unsurprisingly, children who were exposed to sexually explicit movies and TV shows would then go on to have sex sooner as well. In fact, a study by the Children's Hospital Boston found, quote, for every hour the youngest group of children, aged six to eight, watched adult targeted content, their chances of having sex during early adolescence increased by 33%. And these behavioral changes have echoes inside the brain. According to Columbia University, fMRI scans of people watching violent imagery show activity in the right lateral orbital frontal cortex, the area involved in reactive aggression, and the supplementary motor cortex, the area involved in planning and imagining behaviors. Essentially, people would visualize themselves being violent, and then the part of their brain associated with violent reactions was also active. Another study found as teens watched more violent content, their connection between violent behavior and emotion would weaken. All this might explain why people who watch violence can go on to be more violent in their own lives. It seems to me, when we see a lot of violent media, we begin to disconnect the emotional reaction to risky sexual activity, alcohol abuse, or violence with actually doing those things, making us more likely to try them. It's not always a bad thing, but sometimes it can be. We can fight this, of course, and it helps to start with the kids. One of the researchers recommended we simply pay attention to movie ratings. Children are more impressionable than adults. They should, quote, not be permitted to see R-rated movies. Also, if the violent person is a role model, their actions carry even more weight. To fight that, says another lead researcher, we should simply point out movies are works of fiction. Funnily enough, having that conversation really can help. There's a lot more going on with this than you think. Julia looks into how the brain reacts to your favorite movies in this video here. Researchers from the University of Tokyo monitored the eye movements and blinks from subjects as they watched a short clip from Mr. Bean. They thought that most people might blink at the end of a scene at an obvious break, which was true. But they also found that blinks tended to happen during implicit breaks. What is your favorite movie? Is it action-packed? Let's make a list. I'm going on vacation soon. I'm going to need something to do. Let us know down in the comments. Keep coming back here every day for more D-News. Make sure you subscribe. Thank you if you have already. We'll see you later.